Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you my LEGO Charizard Mega X mock and giving you a detailed look of the build including its features, posability, and some of the building techniques used. If you're interested in building this yourself, you can check the link in the description below for both the parts file and instructions which are now up on my store and the proceeds just help to support this channel in future mocks and builds. The total part count for this mock is 473 pieces and at the time of the recording this video, it's estimated to cost around $50 to $55 Canadian. Please keep in mind this does not include shipping or handling, and your final cost may vary. So this video has probably been a long time coming, and I probably thought I'm making this video and instructions for far too long, but I'm happy to be finally showing you all the finished build. Also if you haven't watched it already, I just uploaded the review for my regular Charizard mock, which you can now check out on my channel, and if you've been following me on Instagram, I think I first posted this design of the Mega X form way back in uh, I think 2020. And in my previous video, I mentioned that I had designed this at the same time as the original form as well. I was mainly focusing on designing the main uh, form since orange was the more limiting part color. And also since I knew that uh, this mega form would be using a lot of black, uh, which is a very common part color in LEGO, I knew that the design would be much smoother uh, afterwards. There were some tweaks and uh, part swaps in between the different forms since they had some uh, slightly different features and some of the pieces didn't exist in both colors. But I would say that 80 to 90% of the build is uh, pretty much the same between the two different uh, designs. Taking a closer look at the body, again it uses the same building techniques that I explained in my previous video for the shaping and interior structure. And almost all the parts used here are just a direct color swap from the orange and tan to the black and dark azure you see here. Coming around to the back, not much is different here, and the wings and tail are all attached with mix style ball joints, and we'll take a closer look at each of them uh, a bit later. First taking a closer look at the arms, I mentioned in my previous video that the arms are the simplest part of the design, and that's true for this form as well. The main change is that I use these ratcheted hinge cylinder pieces, which now adds elbow articulation that wasn't present in the original mock. Other than this, it has the same points of articulation at the shoulders and wrists, so you can bend the arms up and down, Rotate it forward and back, rotate the wrists, bend them up and down, and open and close each of the fingers as well. Uh, you do have to be careful since the shoulder connection is pretty fragile. So usually I'll just take off the entire arm, pose it how I like, and then just reattach it uh, once I'm satisfied. And then uh, the, other, the other change you may have noticed is that on the shoulders, it has these uh, two Dark Azure Spikes, which is just done with these uh, one by one cheese slopes onto some brackets. And also you just have to be careful when handling it since the shoulders do tend to pop off by themselves. Taking a closer look at the legs, I won't take too long as they're pretty much the same as the original design and have the same points of articulation. The hips and ankles are attached with mixed style ball joints, so there's a wide range of motion, and the knees are fixed at right angles, like the original design. The only other difference you may notice other than the color is that the uh, feet have a slightly longer uh, footprint and that's just because of how it looked in the official design and with the uh, larger footprint it just makes balancing and posing it a bit easier than the original design or original mock. Looking at the wings, this is one of the largest differences between the two forms as its wing shape for the Mega X form is entirely different than the original. The wings here have a lot more sections and flare out more as well so to capture this look I used more wedge plates to capture the overall shaping and then used a couple of these uh, swivel hinge plates to angle the wings up a bit, while also using this larger claw piece at the end to resemble the look of the wing tips. The interior wing color for the original form uses the dark turquoise or teal color, whereas this one uses the dark blue, which I think is a pretty close match. Coming around to the back, I used different wedge plates and tiles in black to cover up the dark blue and smooth it off where I could, while making sure it wasn't too bulky. In the original mock, you could bend the wing sections forward and back, however for this form, you can only angle them up and down, uh, but since the base of the wing is attached with the mix style ball joint, you can get the wings in a lot of different poses. And you can even have it strained out if you want it to look like it was gliding or to swoosh it around. Looking at the tail, it's just a simple color swap with a few pieces that were changed due to the limited part catalog for the dark azure color. But the overall look is pretty much the same as the original design. Each section is attached with mix style ball joints with lots of range of motions in between. And it has the same tapering effect where at the tip it uses a large blue flame or water blast piece for its tail flame. This is one of the main parts I checked in the part catalog first early in the design process since I wanted to make sure that this flame piece was consistent across the different forms. For the head and neck, it's pretty much the same build as the original mock, but the main differences you'll see are in the head. The cheeks or sides now have this large blue flame that flares out, 
and it's the exact same piece that is used for the tail flame. If you wanted to, you could swap this out with a smaller flame piece to make it look a bit calmer, but I like using the larger ones here since it gave it a more intense and dramatic look. Uh, one of the other differences is in the horns, which have a highlighted tip at the ends. So I try to capture that with two of these uh, translate blue cones attached onto some Technic pin connectors. However, I would have liked the horns to be a bit thinner, but I wasn't able to find another way to properly capture it. And I wanted to make sure that I included them since it helped to complete the overall look. Like the original, the head is attached using a mix of style ball joint. So you can change the position of it, but the range of motion is a bit limited. You can open and close the mouth. We aren't able to fully close it. And another point of articulation that's uh, added here is you can change the angle of the side flames if you wanted to. And then like the original, the neck is fixed uh, at this angle. Finally, for those of you wondering, this is how it looks scaled up to a random minifigure. And this is how it looks compared to my original Charizard mock side by side. So let me know down in the comments below your thoughts on this mock as well as any ideas of what you want to see me build next, and I may just pick yours for a future video. I know that a lot of you guys have commented wanting to see more Mega Evolutions, and I do plan on making more in the future. However, some Mega Evolutions are almost completely different from the original form, so it may take a bit longer to design, but I appreciate everyone's patience. I usually post all my mocks or designs on my Instagram first, but let me know if you want to see some progress rapid videos here on this channel as well. I also have a bunch of other LEGO Pokemon mocks uploaded onto my channel already, so feel free to check them out, and a couple of them will show up on screen shortly. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.